everybody welcome back to the channel so I'm on my way to North Carolina and uh, stopped to get gas and whatever and I was looking at a post on one of the expediting Facebook groups and this is it's his uh, year anniversary since he began his his uh, cargo van business and he was talking he mentioned in there how the first I believe he said four to six months was really really tough on him as far as trying to find loads dealing with breakdowns you know basically being down to his last dollar at times uh, just to keep going forward and it just made me think about like that's why uh, me personally uh, why I try to you know give you guys as much advice as I can as far as to be careful uh, just because I don't I, me personally I don't want to see people fail it doesn't affect me you know financially or anything it's not that uh, uh, you know I'm worried about competition or anything like that I just I, I, I know what it's like to fail and I don't want to see somebody do that because one aspect of it is is I I, I love my job I love what I do I love everything about this industry I love everything about driving a van I love all of it about being on the road there's nothing I don't like about this job and I worry sometimes that because of that it may come across like I'm being extremely positive and like this is very simple out here and it's and when it's not uh, there's definitely money to be made out here there's no doubt about that because freight has to get from point A to point B like that's gonna always be the case so there is money to be had out there it's just that you have to have a path or, or some kind of you know plan to get that freight and to make that money and uh, again this got me thinking about how uh, like currently my brother and I we have our own authority kind of trying to build a business now me personally when we first got our authority I had uh, I had two transit vans and then I still had the cargo van rolling and uh, or actually, no, I had one transit van and I had a cargo van still rolling. That's how it was. And so we got the authority and we knew that, that you know, it takes a little time for brokers to want to mess with you as far as uh, the age of your DOT and whatnot. So what we did is my cargo van, where it was on at the time, I had to carry my own insurance. So by carrying my own insurance, that, that uh, you know, took care of the... Uh, what needed to be done to have our operating authority active so it basically just sat there idle being active because my brother and I were both running with Barrett at the time so we didn't do anything with the authority we just kind of let it age I mean and the reason I wanted to do it that way is because I just wanted to do it safely like it took me a while to finally take that leap and go completely in on you know depending on my authority alone to get freight I was with Barrett at the time I was making good money uh, I was running well so it was I was really leery about making that move that's why uh, it took a while now my brother he ended up beginning using the authority before I did and he, he did okay with it he wasn't doing the grace but he was doing okay and uh, then finally the pandemic hit uh, and during the pandemic when I was home I got to kind of messing with the load boards and seeing what was going on and bidding some loads for my cargo van uh, and and because at that point I had two transit vans they were both on with Barrett but I had my cargo van sitting at the house so I got the cargo van all up and going and started bidding freight for it and I'm like damn man this is you know, this is pretty easy and then just went from there so the point of all that is just to say I'm the type that I'm extremely careful in what I do because I have a you know I have people depending on me so I don't want to fail and be put in a situation that I mean just a just a bad situation in general because I don't have a college degree I don't have you know one skill that sets me apart that makes me hireable to any job I'm a, I'm a felon and no, you know, it, obviously it's difficult to get a job with a felony, so you're kind of relegated to either factory jobs, food service shit, you know, kind of labor type stuff, unless you, you know, become independent and do your own thing, which is, you know, part of 
what I love about this because it does give you, you know, the freedom to do what you want, you know, to an extent. And it also gives you the ability to not have nobody, you know, breathing down your neck. So, uh, yeah, I just, I was extremely careful. I wish I would have done it sooner. I wish I had made the leap sooner, but I was just, again, I, I was worried about failing. I'm, I'm the type, I spend too much time thinking about worst case scenario and trying to prepare for that so that that doesn't happen. And it does, it makes me, it takes me a little longer to get where I want to be, but at least I'm never, you know, I haven't been in any bad situations since then. I mean, yeah, money's been tight at times, things like that due to breakdowns, whatever, and, and not being as good with my money as I should be. But overall, like since I've started, you know, down this career path of, you know, being in expediting, like, I mean, the quality of life has been a lot better. But again, I've been very cautious. So, so when in these videos, at times, if some people may take it as though I'm trying to deter you from coming out or don't want the competition, that's not the case. It's not that I'm trying to deter you. It's just that I'm trying to make you aware and trying to give you kind of a, a, an idea of what my mindset was and how I did it and how it worked for me to be at this point now. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of touch on that because, again, you see a lot of people. They go buy a van. They're not sure what to do with it. Uh, you know, they, they don't know how to get freight with it. So they're asking everybody for freight. You know, they like they get on these Facebook groups. And to me, that's kind of like, it's a little, not scary, but that's the best word I can think of at the moment. But to come out and be like, hey, I got a van. I got my own authority. Uh, hey, I need a load. You know, to me, you know, it's like I'm going to know where I'm getting my load before I get a van, let alone my operating authority. Uh, so that's the stuff that I try to, you know, relay to people is kind of kind of know what you're doing before you just jump in. Because you jump in again, especially go buy a van unless you got the money to buy it outright. Like, man, you got a payment coming. You know, you got that payment each month. You got that insurance each month. Uh, and now you got pressure on you to make something happen and you know being pressured call can cause mistakes now granted if you get through those mistakes there it's learning experiences and it helps you do better going forward but a lot of the people that mistake it drowns a man and it, it knocks them out of the game so uh, just just be careful man just but no again no that by all means there's money out here there's money for everybody. Uh, you know, just do things the right way. Do things carefully, man. You'll make it work. And, I mean, you've got to, you know, and, again, a lot of it comes down to how much common sense and awareness you have. I mean, I've said that before. A lot of the failure comes from that person, in, in meaning that they just wasn't prepared enough. They didn't have enough knowledge of the industry and understanding of how to do things. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, I guess that's my ramble for the moment. I just kind of just wanted to touch on that when I seen his post. But yeah, man, everybody, just keep researching if you're if you're looking to get into this. Again, and I'm gonna try and touch on it in a, in a future video soon. But the biggest thing is have a plan in place to make the money before you purchase. You know, you put that big investment or burden on yourself uh, of a van and a van payment and insurance payment. Uh, and I guess I can touch on, I guess I can, it leads me to, like when I got my own van, when I bought my my first van, I was driving for a fleet owner, I was with the carrier, and before I ever bought a van, first thing I did, talk to the carrier, hey, uh, if I get a van, will, will you allow me to sign it on here? They said yes, so that was the first thing taken care of. Now, I need to know what insurance is going to do. You know, how is insurance going to affect me? Because I know what money... Just let me let me back up just a tad for a second. Driving for a fleet owner, 60-40 split. Uh, actually, I had a 70-30 split at the beginning with him. So, having a 70-30 split, you can just do the math. Like, I know what I was getting, paying for gas and whatnot, out of the 70%. And then driving the van and I see how often it's breaking down oil changes those things and I'm seeing what that's costing 
So I do the math of what I, you know what all that entails being 100%. What does that equal out to, and is that going to be enough to cover everything? So I know that there's insurance needed. So then I call and get an insurance quote. Okay, what's it going to cost me? Am I going to be able to afford this? Is this going to really, you know, make it difficult on me? It was the same thing with the van payment. You know, I kind of knew where I needed to be van payment wise. Which, and again, on my first van, I didn't do it the way I should have done it. Luckily. Uh, the fact that I got a cargo van and it, the, it really wasn't a killer payment each month. It was only like, I want to say like 300 and some odd dollars per month. So that was that was an easy one to swallow, that, that expense. But I knew ahead of time what I needed and, and I verified that everything was going to fit if I did it. You know, if I made that jump of getting a van. Okay, if I get this kind of payment, I got the insurance quote. Okay, insurance is going to cost me this. I have a pretty good idea of what maintenance and everything is going to cost me, which, again, I'm kind of veering a little off track, but this is for another video. That's why, you know, when it came to decision making on which van I wanted, you know, those things came into play as far as how much maintenance would cost me, repairs might possibly cost me, things of that nature. But the, uh, the point is, understand, you know, get everything together. You know, just figure out everything you need, and is it going to work? Like, if you, you know, a lot of you guys aren't out with the carrier right now. You're not currently doing this job, whether it be expediting, whether it be courier work, whether it be, you know, regional or local deliveries of some sort off of these apps. No matter what it is, like, some of you aren't doing that, so you don't have anything to base it off of. So now you're out here watching videos like mine and others, and, uh, I do have a video where I break down what my driver's pay was for the for the one year, what my pay was for the year. So if you go back and, and find those videos, uh, I'll try to remember to, to tag them in this video and uh, to, to where you can uh, link it up here and, and get to it. But uh, it'll give you an idea. You got to figure out how much you're going to make so that you can figure out if X amount of money for a van payment and insurance is going to work. Uh, that's why I say, and I've said it before, but you know, and it's what I know. I know about carriers, working with carriers. Like, my thing hasn't been I got where I am by being an independent contractor, or, or well, I should say, like, local deliveries, apps, and having my own authority all this time. Like, I worked under a carrier because, it's, it's, to me, it's the safe way to go because you're going to earn, yes, you're going to have to hustle. You're going to have to put in more work, possibly because you're not getting as much of the money. But at least you're coming out here, you're getting experience. You're, you're understanding what the rates are. You're understanding what the job entails. You know, it can make you decide like, oh shit, I don't want to do over the road expediting. I'd rather do, you know, try to get my feet into the uh, courier stuff or, you know, work some apps, you know. So let me look at that avenue. But getting on with the fleet owner, with the carrier, if you have zero experience is a really good way to go about it. Because you're not investing much money. You're investing some time, yes. But if everything goes accordingly and this 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 job and lifestyle is a fit for you, you're not going to go broke. You're not going to lose money. So you're gonna you're gonna stay status quo to where if you went out and bought a van now before you ever got experience, as opposed to going out and getting the experience then buying the van. That's the way I look at it. Like your situation shouldn't deteriorate once you start with the fleet owner it just shouldn't like it should be all beneficial to you if you have no experience to get on with the fleet owner so that's why i always suggest that route i know people want to be their own boss and i get that and there is there is some freedom if you pick the right fleet owner and get out here uh you don't have to worry about being hounded and shit i understand some fleet owners are shit but yeah man i'm, I'm kind of getting all over the place but I guess the, to summarize every, the, the points I'm trying to make in this is, you know, get all your information together before you come out here and make an investment and understand that, yes, there is money out here to be made. You're not going to get rich unless you choose to scale your business. And if you want to just stay a one van operation, you're, you're only going to be able to max out to a certain extent and you're not going to get rich that way. But if you choose to scale your operation to get more vans or to get your operating authority and become a dis, you know, a carrier with dispatchers and load boards and things like that, that's an option. There's just all kinds of options out here, and all of them is, you know, making money. So 
keep doing what you're doing. Don't be discouraged. Uh, if this is something you feel you really want to do, it, you, you'll make it happen if you really want this. It's going to happen because you're at this point now to where you're even learning about it and understanding it and, and uh, kind of being able to get an avenue to get yourself into it. So keep going, man. And with that, I'm going to get off here because traffic is starting to get shit and I don't need to be distracted. You got people wanting to, some people want to do 100 miles an hour. Others are doing 30 mile an hour and trying to fit in all between it like that right there. I leave enough room that, like, that safe space, yeah, I, I left that safe space just for you to squeeze in there. That's what I did. That's what I did for you. You freaking idiot. So, alright man, I'm gonna get out of here. Road rage is catching up.